Hello and welcome to another episode of Rosham Joe Paints. I, as always, am Joe, and today I'm going to be tackling the Assault Intercessor from the recently released Indominus kit. Now, uh, I'm going to be painting it in my Fulminators uh, scheme, which is pretty much the Ultramarines with a little bit of extra white on there. Um, the overall look is, is pretty clean. Uh, I don't do too much uh, weathering or anything like that. Uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when it's complete uh, up front so you know what, uh, what to expect. Um, I know there's a lot of how to paints out there and uh, I am by far not the greatest, but one thing that the, all those, all those guys don't have is, um, is, uh, I, I guess the run on sentences and the unimportant information constantly, uh, constantly repeated. So, uh, without further much ado, stalling for time and, uh, further much ado, I guess, uh, intro. So once again, welcome everybody. What we're today we are going to be doing is painting this Assault Intercessor with his chain sword and pistol. Um, the model itself looks fully assembled. However, uh, as usual, I'm gonna just take it apart in about two seconds here and spray paint it. We're gonna start with a little bit of the um, McCrag blue uh, spray primer, simply because uh, I'm gonna be painting blue anyway. Might as well get a good nice uh, blue primer down. And the blue pot, the stuff that comes out of the pot is actually, um, it's pretty close to what comes out of the can. Like I haven't really noticed as long as it's nice, nice and thin. Um, make sure I gotta shake it up, usual steps and whatnot. I'm also going to be, I'm also going to be doing um, this guy at the same time, which is the sergeant of the group. Um, this particular one is the one that has a helmet on, simply because I don't like painting skin. So I would rather, uh, you know, paint a nice red helmet for you guys. So that's what I'm gonna do. And since he does have the um, like the, the breastplate attachment, I'll just show you. A couple things here that are that are slightly different, but overall the rest of the model is is pretty much the same. Uh, one thing I don't like about these push to fit, um, which is just a problem of my own, is the how close they are. So like this this leg back here, I don't know if I'm going to be able to paint much of that. Um, at least you know getting the edge highlights in there, um, but that's okay. That's personal preference. You could have if you wanted to. This leg and this leg, as well as the sword and the front of the chest plate here are all separate assemblies. Um, so you could paint them all separately, technically, and then uh, just try to push them all together. Uh, it's, that's not worth it that much for me. Um, also, uh, something fun about this guy is I really wanted to put a log like right in front of him, just to make it look as if he was actually he not running forward, but tripping. Um, but uh, I respect my models more than that. Maybe someday when I have you know, 1200 or something like that will do that. So anyways, uh, so I'm going to go paint these guys with the uh, spray primer and then I will begin probably on the known oil uh, portion of the video. So, all right, stick around. I'll be back. So with the uh, spray coat of McCrag Blue on there, now we will bring in a targeted, and I say targeted because it's fun to say, um, known oil uh shade so it just goes into all of the corners and i'm not watering this down i'm pulling it straight out of the pot and if i mess up i am going to go back and cover that up with highlights and also a little bit of mccrag blue directly out of the pot but oh my god i don't know why i can get you know what it is it's this thing on the left here we go all right um bumping into something so basically anywhere there is armor meeting each other um that's where it goes so it's actually a really really simple step now you could if you felt like you wanted to just go over the entire piece all together um and uh and just like you know give it a good give it a good wash uh like this oh, so you can see it um however when you do something like that the problem is if you want this to be blue or white or some other color, well, you're going to have to come back and paint over that and clean it all up. Now, I'm going to go in here with a somewhat drier brush and try to pick some of that up because while I was trying to make a point, I didn't want to make my point that well. So, um, anyways, so there you go. It's a really simple step. You're just filling in 
uh, with a little bit of olive oil, wherever, whenever, Shakira something, etc., etc. So, if you wanted to, if you were so inclined, you could also do this step um, after you paint things like the silver. And um, I'm going to do my normal Eschen Gray with Nuln Oil over trick for things like the um, the soft soft joints. So instead of painting them black and then trying to highlight with colors, like uh, so. Two steps, you could go black, Eschen Gray, Dawnstone, or what I do is I just go Eschen Gray and then Nuln Oil, and that darkens it up enough that I'm I'm happy with how the color looks. So, because I'm using Nuln Oil on those, you could, you know, feasibly go back later and just, you know, get all of the, uh, all the spots where you're looking to have that uh, Nuln Oil as a, sh as a wash um, applied. But... I don't want to do that right now because one, I already started doing it this way. Uh, maybe if I hold it upside down, you can see it. Oh, I'm looking for a good spot. Anyways, uh, yeah, there you go. So just uh, put some nulling oil wherever you can find two plates meeting each other. Trace all these little lines on the back. There's something about these lines actually. Um, I think it was the the other model that I'm going to be doing at the same time. The Sergeant, actually, this one, this one too. So the the line here is really really faint so you're going to want to make sure that you go over that with no oil and get uh and get a nice solid uh line i'm not going to wipe any of that off what i'm going to do is i'm going to clean it up with the mccrag blue because it's such a shallow line i want to make sure it gets pronounced uh by using the paint so i'm going to go back in with the calgar blue and the mccrag blue and maybe even fenrisian just to make sure nah probably not fenrisian that'd be crazy um just to make sure that this line ends up being seen at all um you know now, when you get into here, see it's in there as well. And then it goes down this side and you basically, it just kind of disappears. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you come back and help it uh, help it get the, uh, what do you call it? The attention it deserves, you know? Because if anyone's looking at this model, they are looking at the back of the leg at a really tricky angle, obviously. So anyway, I will finish this. Um, goes without saying that it's also going to be on all these parts as well um, anything that is going to be the blue armor piece so um, I f probably on the backpack that's where I will do all of my silvers first and then I'll do the wash uh, all together but like the arms this is going to get a lot of white in here so I'm not going to do it there this is going to have some silver it's going to have some black it's going to have some white it's going to get a yada 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 so I will do non oil on all of these things and then I will return so some eagle-eyed viewers out there may notice this is not a Space Marine, even uh, no matter how hard it tries to be. Um, sure, it's got the McCrag blue, and it's got a little bit of Calgar blue, and it's got some Nolan oil. But overall, uh, I'm using this piece, and extra points if anyone knows what uh, what this actually came off of, which, uh, which set it came from. You know, I'll just give you a little bit of time to look at it. Anyways, the what I wanted to do here is paint up and waste some time showing you um, what I'm talking about when I say Eschen Gray and Nolan Oil versus Abaddon on Black and highlighting with Eschen Gray. If I were to tell you that these two colors, this one here and this one here, are different, you could probably say, yeah, they're, they're different colors. But if I were to just put this on a table way over there, and again, it's a, it's a detail you're not really going to see, could you really notice the, the difference that much? I guess now that I'm Holding it this far away, maybe, because it all kind of, the mouth kind of blurred and this this is prominent. That could also be because of how the model is sculpted. Now, overall, um, what this blurriness is, <laughs> the blurriness is attempting to show, um, is that the Eschen Gray with Nuln Oil is a fast and easy method to paint the raised ridges of the soft armor, while the Abaddon Black and Eschen Gray over it is also perfectly acceptable to do. I'm just kind of lazy, you know? And the, the look comes out uh, clean enough for me. Now, in this example, this down here is the Abaddon Black with Eschen Gray over it, and this mouth, this whole mouthpiece here is the, um, the Eschen Gray with the Nuln Oil. So, um, it's a slightly lighter hue, but overall, for me, the, the expedience of it and the cleanliness of it 
makes up for it. Because what I end up doing when I try to do it the other way around is I have the Abaddon Black and it's done and the lines are clean and I've cleaned everything up. And then I go to put in the Ashen Gray and I go right into that crevice. And now I have to go back with either Nolan Oil to darken it down or, or something else. So I like to just do Ashen Gray, clean it up and be done and move on with my life. So um, here is the model. Yay, there's the actual thing we were painting. Um, oh gosh, no, it's all super blurry. There we go, nope, still blurry. Here is it with all of the uh, null and oil on it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do exactly what I just talked about. I'm going to put Eschen Gray into the armor joints here. And uh, basically anywhere that there are those soft now. Another spot would be up here in between the torso. Uh, just this tiny little crack of armor there. There are these straps, which I have no idea what they are. They start back here and they go forward to just right about there. And that's it. So I'm going to paint those. Um, man, I don't know what is wrong with my camera today. Camera, AKA phone. But uh, anyways, a uh, little bit on the front. Can barely get in there, can barely get in there. Uh, again, this is also something I do simply because um, the model that I see this most on where you can get away or you cannot get away with um, where you can take the time and make it look good is the Reavers. The Reavers have a ton of these soft joints exposed. Well, on the Intercessors and Captains and all the rest, there's hardly anything. Um, maybe on like a librarian who has his, his palm open or something like that. And even then you might be doing some OSL. Overall, do what you like. Either Abaddon Black, Eschen Gray, uh, Nolan Oil, and then highlight whatever you want to do. I'm not going to stop you because I'm sitting at my bench. And I, I'm having fun painting. So I'm going to continue painting. Uh, and don't forget to get any of the... Um, there's some around the base of the head that you will never see once you tuck the head into place. Uh, so make sure you cover that as well as um, any of these uh, in between the elbows or under these armpits that, again, you're probably not going to see except for extreme angles. So you got to make sure if you're like me, you got to make sure you hit them. So anyways, I'm going to go do that. I'll be back. So at this point in the video, I believe I've said Eschen Gray and Abaddon or Abaddon or whatever, uh, a combined, ah, I'm putting, setting the over under around 30, but, uh, so I'm gonna try and make this short and sweet because that's exactly what this step is. So now you see the Ashen Gray is here in the joints and all we're going to do is put in a little bit of Nolan oil and let it dry. That is the entire extent of these soft joints. Um, so there you go. It's, like I said, all <laughs> had to sit through about, I don't know, 10 minutes of me talking about how to do it and why you can do it either way you want to do it and painting a Tyranid head to try and show it off and all that fun stuff. And really it just comes down to, I could have been like, all right, then put Eshing Gray here and put a little bit of Nolan Oil on there. Um, but that's not who I am, you know, ask anybody who knows me which is probably the majority of the people watching these videos, but ask those people, Hey, is a uh, Joe concise and easy and just gets to the point or does he tend to see I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. All I had to do was say, let's say, keep this in focus. Let's say, get a little bit of Nolan on there. Next step, 10 seconds done. Nah, nah. It's a Mitch Hedberg thing. I think. Turns out that tree is far away. Anyway, I'm gonna finish this up and then do all of the parts on the uh, arms, the gloves, the helmet, and then I will, I think we're gonna start either uh, a little bit of brown, a little bit of white, or a little bit of um, silver next. So we will start seeing a lot more color uh, start to pop out on this model. All right, that was the entire portion. I'm going to let that dry and move on. So with all of the portions in Lead Belcher now complete, we are going to move on to my next base coat, which is a Morn Fang Brown. And that is going to be done on all of the uh, leather portions. So that will be the pistol case as I am, uh, holster that is, as I am painting right now. But there's also things like this tiny little something in the front. Not exactly sure what it is, but I'm pretty sure it's made of uh, it's made of leather. 
And then there's, on this particular model, there's one and two more uh, back here that are going to be, um, you know, colored that brown as if they were leather. Now, it's really kind of awkward to get to this guy, but since I didn't glue him down to the base, I can actually pop him out and see if I can, you know, see, you see where I'm looking right there? Right in between right no you can't you might be able to see the shadows but basically i'm just trying to hit this piece right here because that is something you can see you know let me turn this light on yeah, still can't quite see it i'm gonna get it for you now that i've made a deal about it so there we go all right you can kind of see where the paint hit it but basically in here is the other side of this holster so i'm going to try my best to actually get that painted because you can see that and ah uh, maybe you can't i don't know i'll know it's there that's the problem anyways so i'm going to paint all the leather and I'm going to clean that random spot that I just hit up. And uh, yeah, that'll be that step. I'm gonna put a little bit, of, once this is done, I will cover the um, Morn Fang Brown with Agrax Earth Shade to shade it and get into all the fun little recesses and whatnot. Again, I'm not gonna show you that step because it's very simple and it just gives me a chance to uh, if I were to put that in, that step in, it's just going to be another five minutes of me talking and nobody needs that. So trust me, there's, a, there's plenty of other talking to be had. So let me finish this, clean up the spots that I just messed up and make sure it's in focus next time. Yeah. All right. Talk to you in a bit. Talk to you in a bit. Bye. <laughs> Click. Call me back. It's that part. It's that time of night, I think. It's the time of night where still be up for another, I don't know, hour and a half? Hey, maybe we'll get all the base coats done and then uh, come back tomorrow. All right, the Mornfang Brown is done. That guy is over here. Um, however, the next step I'm gonna do is Celestra Gray to start filling in the white areas. And there's none of it on the actual model of uh, the body, the head, or the backpack. However, both arms uh, get a decent amount. So now this portion is where it starts to, I mean, this is really, this is what makes the fulminators, the fulminators is, you know, it's no longer an ultramarine as far as everything just being basic blue. Um, I'm gonna be putting white on the um, the shoulder pad here on the, uh, the inside of the shoulder pad. The outside is gonna be, I think it's second company or something like that, but basically it's gold. I like the gold trim, it looks good. Um, and then I'm also going to put this on like what I consider to be like a van brace here. Um, I don't know if that's correct or not, but when you look at this arm, he doesn't have a giant plate. When you look at this arm, he does. So I'm gonna put that here um, as well. And this is a mostly thin, thinned down coat because we are gonna be adding the uh, Ulf One gray over the top um, as a, that's the actual layer I want, the base coat. but. Painting Ulthuan on top of the blue primer would take a lot longer and a lot more coats and just, you know, so we're gonna do the Celestia, which is an actual base coat and I'm using a thin brush. This is not the right brush to use, but I, uh, it's the one I grabbed and I also wanted to just kind of mark things out. So the Chainsword case is actually going to be uh, all white as well. And there's no kind of like separating boundary between the front of the chainsword all the way back here. This is actually just one solid line all the way back. Just watch out for all the silver that you already put in. You're gonna be coming back in again with a little more Nuln oil into these, um, in this area, but this whole, this whole back here, this whole back, whatever it's called, pommel. I think, no, that's the pommel. This is the, somebody tell me, I don't know. I'm not gonna look it up right now. But this, uh, this doohickey bit that's up here is all going to be in, uh, in white along with this. And then, um, finally, the other piece of white that I'm going to do, or the other portion of white, is the case to the gun. Now, I've done silver, and I've applied the null oil to the silver, so be careful around those bits. I don't know what I'm telling. I'm telling myself that. But if you're, doing, if you're following along, also be careful. Um, but once you get up to this, like, this is going to be... Uh, um, the, uh, I think this is the only area of the, the model for me that's actually going to be a bad and black, um, but, uh, or Abaddon, I just still don't know how to pronounce it properly. Um, so anyways, go up here. I'm going to do 
the top of the case in celestial gray follow it up with oath one gray i might um might not do that step because eh, what the hell you know what what the hey let's uh let's do this real quick so um you know what let's before i spend another six hours painting with a fine tip brush let me get a slightly larger brush um thin down paint still you don't want anything too heavy uh but come in here hit up all this and then maybe i will go back so what i want you to see or at least what i think i want you to see is the amount of layers it takes overall to make sure this white gets in here nice is probably two full coats of celestra and then you'll still see some of that blue through it but then um another two or three coats of the um ulth one gray the one thing i would recommend avoiding is whites are kind of annoying to paint with because they tend to be like i don't know if chunky maybe i don't know um if you try to put two on at once you, you just see the lines a lot so what i like to do is make sure they're, they're watered down and just right there where it's like it almost you know is, is pulling away and just not filling it in avoid the temptation of then just going oh well, i'll just grab a ton more paint similar to the, the necrons if you watch that video if you try and fix that while it's still wet you're just going to pull a bunch of the paint off and you're going to end up making a bigger problem so even if it doesn't look right even if it kind of looks um spotty and chunky and nasty right now let it dry completely then go back whites yellows oranges things like that the lighter colors just seem to seem to want to do that um and i don't know why there's probably some reason and maybe it's just the formula of the uh of how the paints actually are are uh, are created maybe it is just because you know magic maybe maybe there's some sort of magic involved or what would this be in 40k be like perils of the warp you know you you tried to paint a uh, a white color and you you roll the one or whatever that comes out to again i don't i don't play the game so i don't know oh look at that see we're all saying it's going to take a little bit of back and forth yeah well when you paint directly over the silver parts then it definitely takes some back and forth so uh i'll be repainting that but that's fine you know um just try not to uh if you're using too thick of a coat well then you're going to be in for a long a long night um because i don't know how you paint is an additive process like i mentioned um in one of my videos at one point in my life which i've only had like five i guess i could go back and look it up but wow rant anyways i'm gonna go back to painting and uh, not trying to explain what i'm doing but in general be careful around um the portions that you have already painted that you don't want to have to repaint again but feel free to be messy around the portions that you do want to paint again um you know because uh you do you anyways i'm going to finish up with this uh van brace and then i'm going to go back and hopefully that will be dry enough at this point to show you uh the second coat of celestial gray again very watered down very thin and you know this portion over here has some good coverage so i'm just going to focus on this part and you'll see that it's like oh cool it's covering up again and i i might have to do a third coat because while it looks like it's covering once it dries it might look different now if if you're at a point where it seems like um you know you've put enough of the celestial gray on um or if you just are done with celestial gray and you want to move on to a full-on gray by all means go ahead um i think that's probably a good enough coat of celestial gray because now i'm getting um, even less of that blue showing through so we're gonna go while well, that's drying back to the other piece this is going to be like a super long segment so I apologize uh should have warned you in advance but it's already been like seven and a half minutes holy moly um but what i'm going to do is i'm going to come over here paint this outer casing of the pistol for a little bit again so that you can be entertained by that while the shoulder pad dries and then what i will do is i will paint a little bit of the othuan gray over the uh, shoulder pad to kind of show you um 
what that looks like. And then I won't have to do a whole segment of just Ultha One Gray, uh, even though I probably could have done two short segments. So. This is where I think you need that like intermission music to come in um, and uh, and fill the fill the gap because because I'm certainly running out of things to say about white paint. All right, I think it's dry enough now. When you look at the shoulder pad, it's pretty good. The cool thing about painting um, whites is you you don't have to go super bright for the white to look really white. The Othuan Gray is not the brightest white. There's like, you know, I think there's a couple different, I think even like Corax White, which is a base coat, is brighter than this. But when it's up against, in this case, a blue, or when it's up against a, a silver or a gold, or any other color that isn't a direct competitor to the white, then what you get is you that it shines a lot. So the what I'm going to be able to do is as I paint things in this Othuan white, I will then be able to go and highlight with white scar and actually get a decent highlight on it um, without having to um, do any, I don't know, shading or anything. But basically it, show, it shows up well, um, you know, and, and you're, I don't know where I was going with that. Basically, if you start, I think I think more where I was going with that is if you start with white scar, you have nowhere to go up with. You almost need to use like a metallic to to highlight it to make it to make that that edge shine. Um, but when you use something like the um, like an Othuan gray or a, another off off white, you can you can go back to that white scar and uh, and end up highlighting it. So as you can see, it's coming out plenty white, plenty bright. And plenty blurry. I can't even tell anymore. It's it's probably time for me to shut it down, but I refuse. I want to get all the base coats done, and then I'll go to sleep and start again tomorrow night. But you won't have to sit through that because it's already been ten and a half minutes. I'm I'm pretty sure that this this one segment, uh, just doing these colors, is hands down uh, the longest single segment of any of my videos so far. So congratulations if you made it through that, and if you didn't make it through that. I'm going to congratulate you anyway. You just won't know that I did. All right. I'm going to stop now. Okay. So since you were a responsible painter, the coats of white are now quite, quite nice and uh, very striking. So now we're going to add a little bit of Retributor armor. And this is going to be for things like the shoulder pads over here. Just the trim um, around on both inside and out, so don't forget to get into there. My paint is a bit too thin right now because my wet palette is going crazy, but that's fine. I'm okay with thin paint. I can always dry it out. Um, also, this little icon that is on the van brace, I'm going to paint into gold. The pommel will be gold, so here on the uh, end of the chainsword. And then obviously you get this over here again, just trim again of this shoulder. I think that's the only gold piece on this arm. And then two pieces or two sections on uh, the uh, main body, which is the Aquila here in the center. Be careful not to go too much onto the blue. And if you do clean up later. And then finally, uh, I'm going to do this little metal piece at the bottom of the uh, holster. So I'm going to, oh, what did I just hit? Oh, I just totally hit that spot. Awesome. Uh, so I'm going to clean that up right now. Um, like this. I'm just going to grab some wet water. And since my paints were so thin to begin with, I might be able to just wipe most of that away as if nothing ever happened. And... Nah, it'll, it'll need a little bit of cleanup work. So that's fine. Um, I don't mind that at all. It's not like I was trying to rush this part through. But hey, anyways. So there you go. Um, go ahead and paint up all of those portions I mentioned. I don't think there's anything on the backpack, but yeah, we'll get all those done in Retributor Armor and move on. And with your Retributor Armor now covered or uh, now completed, go ahead and add some Reikland Flesh Shade to all of the uh, cracks and crevices as per usual. Um, I'm going to, for this Vambrace piece, I want to hit all of 
This, I'm probably gonna go a little bit down into the sides where it meets up with the van brace, and then I will just clean up using some Othuan Gray again, um, just to make sure it's nice and tidy. I don't want it to, I don't want it to look too blurry, but I want to make sure that I've gotten, you know, all of the sides in case there's any detail. Um, but it's it's simple enough to go back and clean that up. For the shoulder pieces, I've already gone in and done a Nuln Oil to line the uh, the Ultha One Gray. So I'm going to drop a little bit of the Reichland Flesh Lay just in here, uh, and I'm not going to push it out to the edge because I'm going to be highlighting the edge with Liberator anyway. And so just just around here and then in uh, in the cracks, but not out to the to the far sides. Um, you can put it under here if you want. Uh, just where like the blue meets up with the gold to try and mask any uh, any problems. But also don't forget the pommel on the chain sword. And then of course do the other sides of the shoulders once you're uh, once this is dry enough to to mess with or the all right, do all that, and then we are going to do our final base coats of Mephisto in red, um, some Xandri dust, and some Screamer pink. And I think at that point, oh, and of course the um, Abaddon black right here. So once all those are done, we will have a uh, fully, uh, what do you call it? Fully based and shaded model, and then it'll look pretty good. And we'll go to the next round, which will then be highlighting everything. Uh, so finish up with that, let it dry, and we'll come back. With the gold uh, done and shaded, we will now go rapid fire through a couple of different colors, which are going to be Mephisto Red, which is going to go on things like the eyes and uh, right into just barely tapping it even, and you know. Um, and we're going to shade after with a uh, Agrax Earthshade over the Mephisto Red. So this is... Um, just a base coat and we'll add a couple other colors to brighten this up and give it kind of like a more uh, glowing effect, if you will. But that'll be Mephisto in red on the eyes. Done. Done but blurry. Man, there it is. Uh, now, let's switch over to a couple other colors. This is Screamer Pink. Screamer Pink is used for if your model happens to have any purity seals. It's for the... Um, the wax portion of that purity seal in here. And also for the weapon grip on the chain sword. Uh, kind of hard to get in here, uh, but just try to avoid hitting the blue and the Eschen gray. Oh yeah, go up here so you can actually see it. Um, so yeah, so there you go. Uh, that will be the Screamer Pink portion. And the next color is, if you did have one of those purity seals, you likely have some parchment, which is going to be base coated in Xandri dust. So that will be these two pieces of parchment down here, like that. And I will finish that up later. And then the final, I think the final, is going to be a little bit of Abaddon black um, on the, uh, what, what I consider like to be the, like a, a pump almost, but just a handle of the pistol. It's not, it looks like a shotgun pump, but I'm guessing it's just some sort of handle that, you know, is here on the pistol for whatever reason. So once all of those are done, we will run a little bit of aggregate shade into the red and then Nuln Oil for the uh, Screamer Pink. And nothing for the, nothing for the black, but we'll do a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade as well onto the scrolls. With that, our Base coats and shades for all of the model are done, and we can begin the fun process of highlighting it all. So, we will return. So there you have the uh, whole model done in uh, with the base coats, the layered uh, coats, and then uh, any bit of shading um, for uh, as is needed. Now what we were going to do is, since we have the shades done, we're going to go back and do the highlight portions. So uh, get your paint ready, thin it down a little bit, and edge highlighting is quite simple. You, oop, you get rid of that extra piece of paint on there. There you go. Um, little brush, good point on it. And um, you just 
draw down slowly and I, I, I do it in a manner I, where I almost like I feel like I'm missing the model the first four or five strokes like I don't want to hit it don't want to hit it don't want to hit it and there I finally made contact because what I don't want to do is I don't want to take an edge that's really easy to paint like that and go okay let's paint it boom nailed it and then now it's a, a big old thick one and okay let's go here and let's here there nailed it I did it all right that is edge highlighted right like just like that right if that does happen um where is the focus point there we go um take your thumb wipe across it you know okay well i didn't pull all of it off unfortunately but what i can do is um or what i'm going to do first is i do this on all of my models with all of my paint with all of my everythings and uh and that is well okay i messed up but you know what i'm still gonna have to clean it up but first finish the highlight so because i messed up great now I know uh, I can't really make it a whole lot worse. So let's go back and let's actually do the edge highlight I wanted to get done in the first place. Let's finish off this panel. Okay. Because you already know you're going to end up going back, cleaning it up. So knowing that, knowing you're going to have to pull uh, some of the older paint back out if, uh, if, you, if you had put it away or if you don't have any on like a wet palette or anything like that. Okay, cool. Well, you have this palette, you have this paint out right now. You're working with this. So finish what you were doing. Um, get it to where you want it to be. You know. All right, that looks looks pretty good. All right, so now, now go back and fix it. And when you go back and fix it, you're going to take some of that, uh, in this case, the McCrag Blue, but, it, you know, it's whatever paint you were working with. And... Paint all the portions of the panel that aren't supposed to have an edge highlight on them. So you can go just about up to that edge and just make, you know, make sure your paint is nice and smooth. Like if this takes uh, one or two coats, that's fine. And the whites, um, like when I was doing the Nolan Oil, the white to, to cover up even just something like a thin shade ends up being like one or two coats, sometimes three coats. Um, and that's fine because this is... If you're speed painting, well, one, you're, 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 watching, you're watching the wrong video. But, um, you know, if you're, if you're trying to do this fast, well, then, you know, mistakes are, are you, you, can, you can afford them, obviously. Also, if you're trying to do this fast, well, just stop before you do the edge highlighting phase because the edge highlighting phase takes a long time. So, anyways, so now that I've gone back and cleaned that up, well, it looks essentially like it should now. So, um, we are going to go and use a bunch of Calgar Blue over the whole model. Secondly, um, I'm going to add just barely any of the Fenrisian gray and this is for sharp stuff like this this bottom corner right here and it almost looks white it'll it'll dry slightly darker than that but this will be on just used very sparingly on a couple of the um uh, sharpest corners i don't want to put this like i'm not gonna put it on this panel at all because most of the that most of these is round man putting a little bit here maybe you know it's I also don't want the Fenrisian gray to stand out so much that it that it looks like I missed. Um, see, right there, just I thought I had too much, so I just quickly rushed it off. Um, but if you put too much of this on here, it's going to make like, well, I was supposed to be highlighting with one color, and I ended up not, and I just you know only highlighted certain pieces. So, the uh, the knee pad on this side also has. Oh my gosh, why will this not focus? Um, this knee pad also has a little bit of Fenrisian gray, so it's got the Calgar blue over I would say like 80% of the front and then I just barely tapped the uh, the outside corners with the and gray. It adds a little bit but you know if you get too heavy with it then it's just going to look like you were highlighting with white. Which you know in a Tron kind of world or hard hard um, like high contrast stuff it actually looks pretty good. There's there's definitely a look for that but for my particular models I would stop at the Calgar blue with just barely any sort of Fenrisian gray. I already finished um, actually the helm and the um, all the rest of the pieces and that is because it's going to take me probably um, probably another hour just to do this guy right here and uh, and I didn't want to spend two hours so while I was just watching some stuff listening to music and whatnot um, I went ahead and did the rest so hopefully I'll be able to bang this out pretty quickly uh, one thing I forgot to mention that I wanted to mention and now I have to go mention it really quickly while I say mentioned multiple times is these lines back here there's a lot of lines where you can't actually do that hard edge highlight like for instance this one uh just straight line straight up and down right here um so the best way to do this is similar to how i uh did the front panel is do your best to make a nice straight line 
up and down. I actually did pretty good there. Um, I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to get closer. Will it focus? Will it blend? There it goes. So it's not, uh, it's not terrible. So, um, but if you do mess up again, just go back with your um, Calgar Blue, or not Calgar Blue, this is Calgar Blue. Go back with your McCragrew Brew um, and, you know, draw a line next to it to, to thin it out if you so choose. So that is because, again, these ones are here. You're not going to be able to um, do that like hard, hard edge like that. So like that now that your camera is focused. Okay, so go do all your Calgar Blue, he says to himself, and uh, he will also return. Okay, looking good. The majority of all the highlights are basically done now with those two uh, Calgar and Fenrisian highlights done on the McGrag Blue. But uh, just to make sure we hit all of our I's and dot all of our T's, um, we're going to go back and now highlight things like the Liberator Gold on top of the Retributor Armor. The places that that's done is obviously like the right here on the uh, the skull. The um, move that back. The the Aquila I've already done on on this on his chest, so you can uh, you can see that if it ever comes into focus, it probably never will. Dun dun dun. Any ideas? Uh, if anyone has any good ideas on how to make this thing actually focus, it's a Note Nine. It's got a really good camera for some reason. But for some reason, when filming up close, it doesn't like me. Anyways, um, so now we're going to go and do Liberator Armor on all of the uh, edges here, as well as inside here. For whatever reason, it seems like gold and silver, uh, more so than any other paint, love to just flick off um, when you're painting them. And so like if you're holding a piece after you've, you've painted it on the sharp edges, for whatever reason... Uh, well, I know the reason is you're rubbing it too hard, but the the um, the gold and the silver, maybe it's just because it's a metallic, it's a different type of paint, seem to get a little bit extra um, sensitive. So anyways, so we're going to go in here and we're going to add our edge highlights. And if you are uh, feeling up to the task, you can go and hit the uh, the inside of the shoulder pad, or rather the, the shine that is facing the shoulder pad in here. Um, I don't normally do these, but because I want to show off my incredible, uh, uh, outer-worldly, really, um, brush lack of control. I, uh, I just did that real quick. But yeah, so hit all the edges here. If you want to bring some uh, Runefang Steel or uh, Stormhost Silver back for the very uh, like corners where that's the sharpest you can, I'm not going to um, be careful when you're using that because it does tend to... Um, similar with the Fenrisian Gray, it kind of changes the whole tone of the armor piece because it is such a light highlight. But see, this is actually, you see right there? Right in there is where um, some of the paint gets rubbed off for whatever reason. And like I said, it just seems like it's on, on the metallics mostly. In fact, if you look closely at my thumb, if you look closely at the exhaust port of the, um, the chainsaw, you can see some of the blue, blue primers th uh, showing through. Luckily, since we haven't highlighted any of these, we can now go back and... Uh, make amends as it were and cover cover back up and voila you know it just kind of disappears but at this point don't touch it ever again um just to make sure that you uh you know aren't constantly um getting annoyed and by the way one excellent way to see if you've finished highlighting something fully is to go take a picture of it and not jokingly i'm not joking at all when you go to take a picture of something for some reason, it'll be a different angle, uh, and it'll be just enough that you will see all of the pieces that you missed instead of, um, you know, it's like I'm looking at the same portion, highlighting it the entire time. Well, when you go to take a picture, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I missed an entire portion of that. So if you think you're done, take a picture of it to be proud of yourself and then realize that you're not done and go back and finish it again. Anyways, I'm going to finish up all of the gold, and then we will move on to probably the white scar highlighting at that point. With all of the Liberator Gold done, now let's go and do an edge highlight for all of the uh, white parts, which is done with White Scar. So, uh, no, hang on. Make sure that's... So, sorry, I uh, freaking out, thought I was going to drop it for a second. Um, edge highlighting on the Van Brace here, it's very simple, just hit your corners, try to avoid everything 
as could be said for just about every single step. So there we go. Nice clean, uh, clean white line. Do the same thing down there on the edges. I already did the gun just to see if I can uh, get it up close and show you. And it is not showing up too great. All right, so um, the both the chainsword and the gun have kind of like a um, it's a straight line up, and then there's an angled edge and a top edge. So I don't know how I'm going to show that on camera with a camera phone that doesn't want to you know, really show it very well. I guess I could have done it in a different color, but I'm not going to. So anyways, um, you could try to drag it along and catch that edge, which won't happen necessarily very easily. The other thing to do is to get a decent amount of of the white and just paint the whole thing. So instead of trying to actually edge highlight uh, both edges at once, you paint the whole thing like this and you make sure that uh, that both edges get covered. So what you have is you have a large white line in between the two, which, you know, could be good enough. And, you know, if you do want to leave it like that, you can leave it like that. The other option, which I'm going to explore, is now that I have my, basically I have both edges painted along with the middle, well, let's go back and paint that middle again. So I'm going to come in here and very carefully just paint out that center with uh, Ulthuan Gray. So I don't know if I actually got any paint on the model at all because I am trying to do this from far away so it stays kind of in focus, but maybe I'll try it really close. At some point, maybe by video 50 or 60, I will now, I will have had uh, enough experience that I can uh, actually know where everything needs to be. So anyways, see, we're just taking that white scar and we're taking the middle of it out. So that's what I'm doing. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that's the plan. Uh, the other plan is, or the other um, option, just as with everything else, is to try to make the cleanest line you can and just clean up with Othalon Gray on the outsides where um, where that white scar wasn't supposed to be. So I will do all of the uh, white scar highlights and then come back for some Stormhole Silver slash Rune Fang Steel. Up next, we're gonna highlight our silvers with a little bit of, I'm using Rune Fang Steel. Uh, I would be using Stormhost Silver, but I ran out and the store didn't have any. So uh, Rune Fang Steel it is. It's, I think, essentially the same exact color, if not, uh, just slightly different and wow it just if it's uh basically it gives it gives a decent highlight i think this is what they all recommended highlighting with prior to the stormhost silver coming out and i heard a rumor that uh and don't worry umbrella academy fans i'm not going to uh, take over the world right now but i heard a rumor that the reason that they changed it from runefang steel to stormhost silver was simply because they could trademark stormhost silver and because they had a whole lineup of uh, Stormhost coming out, so you might as well change the names and whatnot. Anyways, point is, get a bright silver highlight and highlight your silvers. This includes things like here on the, the chainsword. Um, make sure you cover up all that blue that might be showing through. And uh, then go back and look for tiny little rivets. Oops. And then hit your camera if, you have, if you're filming with one. Um, if you've got little rivets on the, the guns and whatnot, paint those. The way that I like to do that is, I'm going to show you on my thumb because I don't want to mess my model up any more than I already have. So basically you you go, I'm going to touch it, I'm going to touch it, I'm going to touch it, I'm going to touch it. There, I finally made contact with it and you can barely see it. Weep. See, I made a little bitty dot. So the reason I do that is because if you go too much, then you, you encompass the entire... Um, I think the problem is I keep touching the camera. I gotta stop doing that because then it sets the focus at a certain point and screws it all up. Again, if anyone has any uh, tips, let me know. Like uh, film better, you know, something like that. But regardless, uh, do your, um, I already did the backpack because I wanted to finish that up. I like to paint over the, um, the vents here. I like to highlight these hull just to make them nice and shiny. And then your normal uh, edge highlights on all the lines, including the one in the center. Um, just like that. So it comes out nice and shiny and new. And then of course, one of the coolest things on this weapon is uh, all the teeth. So I'm just going to take my brush and run it down the front side of all of the teeth. I'm gonna leave the upper portions more of the darker color because that's where I would assume all of the 
uh, oil and change the gear and lube and all that fun stuff. But I'm going to essentially do what is kind of like a dry brush back and forth along there to make it nice and pointy looking. So there we go. So go back, finish anything up uh, in silver. Don't forget the couple pieces on the helmet that you might have. The little dots here and there around the entire model that require that. And when you're finished, then we will have Mornfang or Scrag Brown to finish up the leather. And then realistically, it's one, two, and the eyes. So it'll probably be doing the brown, the eyes, and then that, and we're done. And I'll start painting the base. Yeah, you may come back actually to a painted base simply because then I can let it start drying so that I can finish this video even sooner. Silver highlights are now complete, so we are going to move on to doing the uh, brown highlight, and that is going to be scrag brown. And I already basically did most of this, so you can see like the um, pouches are done, and I had to put a little bit of the Retributor armor in the center. Um, so now I'm going to do the edge highlight over just the uh, leather here on the pouches. And what I'm also going to do, which I tried on my white scar um, reaver that I did a little while ago, a little while ago, it hasn't been that long, it was like two videos ago. But anyways, what I did on the white scar guy on his leather is I ended up trying to add a little bit of like weathering techniques. I haven't done it though on any of my other Primaris uh, fulminators. So I think I'm gonna check it out and not do it, but if I did it, it would look something like this. And uh, you know, you got a little bit of the brown on there. I've seen, I was watching, uh, I think it was like the, the Duncan, the new Duncan show, whatever it's called, uh, something along the lines of like the Duncan, Duncan Rhodes Painting Academy, I don't know. He does an amazing job uh, and I look forward to him doing more because I want to see how uh, how bad I am in comparison. As it, uh, you know, it makes me feel bad and it makes me want to get better. You know, once I once I crawl out of that hole of depression, it, may, you know, it makes me want to get uh, better at things. Anyways, so he was doing mixing colors and you adding more and more yellows and doing this and that to your browns. I'm just going to take this and simply drag it the thinnest line I can. Uh, across and eventually it'll leave some paint there. No, it won't. Apparently it dried out. No. Um, but I'm just using the scrag brown still. And I want to do uh, just like one or two lines as if it's been scratched by something. Just, just like that. Really, really simple. And maybe one down here. Same kind of an angle. You know, something like that. Now, what I'm also going to do, because I don't like mixing, I don't like blending my colors, because I feel like if that color dries out, I'm never going to get it again, and I'm never going to remember how I made it in the first place. So I'm using now Joker Orange, and I'm going to go back and just hit a little bit next to that, that scratch. Not the entire scratch line, but just a little bit next to it, just to add maybe a little bit. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. We'll see once it dries. Maybe it'll look better. Either way, I'm not changing it. I'm not going back and fixing it. But I am going to go and finish all of these, and then, uh, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to go right into the next one because why not? All right, so a bonus: get your red ready, and I think this is the Wild Rider red. So we had Mephiston red on the eyes, and then we did Wild Wild Rider red now, after our Agrax Earthshade. And the idea here is to not have this much paint on your brush because it looks like a super, super overkill. Um, and you just want to barely look at, you're looking at making a line just in there. There, that's all it was, just like that. Could I get enough? Let's find out, how's that look? How's that look? It looks a little blurry. All right, so there you go. So um, you just want a tiny line you don't want a whole lot, and the reason for that is, um, if you get too much, you'll you'll flood the the whole cavity, and you'll have to start all over. Now, in order to add a little bit of extra um, pop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to film this while I do it, and I'm going to move my palette away so I don't bump it, and then I'm going to try to get this in focus. Okay, so wish me luck. So I'm going to take a little bit of flash gets yellow, and I'm just going to look to just almost like I'm painting where I was painting the rivets, right? I just want a little bit of a dot. So we just got a little bit of a dot. So from the side, looks like he's looking forward. And from the front, 
Looks like it was looking at you. So there you go. And that'll dry a little, a little lighter anyway. So I'm going to go back and do the other eye now and I'll finish out the browns and then uh, we'll do the, pure, the whole purity seal and we will be done. So the brown's done and I don't hate this, the scars enough to, or the scratches enough to get rid of them. So they'll, they'll remain there. I also put some Armageddon dust uh, for my base. That way it'll start drying now and I can hit up the, uh, hit it up with my shade later and then hopefully just be that much uh, quicker to the finish line. I did forget though, that I also have to do Eschen Gray. So Eschen Gray goes here on um, the black portion of the pistol. Uh, which I think I've been lovingly calling a grip. Um, I can't even tell because of the way the light works. If uh, if I'm getting anything in the right spots, I think I am. But we'll find out later when I look at it and go, oh, I didn't hit any of that. Something I had heard from... Uh, uh, I, this was years ago, so I'm not going to remember uh, which YouTube channel it was on. But... Uh, it was somebody who was painting gray, uh, not gray knights, um, black templars. And they were basically saying like, what you need to do is you set it up so that you can see the light and you just paint wherever the light hits and you're not going to see it go on, but provided your paint is, you know, the correct, uh, consistency and whatnot, like you're, you're getting it on there, but you're basically not going to see it until you put it into a different light or change the angle and then you'll look good. So now uh, let me go ahead and do the outer rim here of the purity seal in pink horror as well. So we will put a little bit of this around the wax of the purity seal and right there in the center, right there in the center, like that, something along those lines. And then finally, not finally, cause it's not finally, but next, next to Lee, I'll make that a word, sure, uh, is painting the uh, parchment of the Beauty Seals now. It's be a little difficult, because um, I like to pretend everything is a little difficult. Uh, let's go with this. So I just want to hit the edge for this lower portion, like thusly, maybe a little bit more on the inside, and then painting the bottom portion here. I'm going to skip that part where it got a little like deep and then I'm going to paint that. Now, uh, all I'm going to do is I will come back and use, um, some, uh, this was, sorry, this is a shabby bone. I'll let you know what I'm actually using here, but this is the shabby bone that, uh, goes on as a layer over the Agrax Earth Sage slash Xandri dust. And then I'm going to come back and use uh, Screaming Skull on the very edges of these. And then I actually have uh, a nice little uh, detail pen that I use, but you could also just use a really, really fine tip on a brush and thin down some black or some brown and just drag little hair lines across to, uh, to give the, um, the appearance of, of writing on these scrolls. So... Uh, with those steps then done, once I go back and check the Eschen Gray, uh, you know, this is probably dry enough for me to even do it right now so that I don't have to cut out another video. Oh, but I do have to pick my pen. Oh, pen? Apparently I'm using a pen now. It's not even that late yet. Okay, so I now have a brush with some busted up bristles that I have to fix, but I refuse to cut. I'm just gonna, there we go. So I get some of this Screaming Skull on here and we will just hit the very edges um, of that shabby bone that we just did like that and like this. Maybe hit that high point on the middle of the parchment and then this edge and since we are going for it, we might as well go for it and try to get both edges at once. Sometimes there's actually, um, when you're painting, the edges are set up like steps almost. And if you have a long enough bristle, you can actually go all the way down the, um, the thing. So this pen I'm going to use now is a, a Faber Castell Pitt Artist Pen Black SX, made in Germany, 
There you go. So um, what it is, is it's a super fine pen. And let me try this off. There you go. All right. Uh, so I just go in here and pretend like I've had too much caffeine and just shake a little bit. Maybe maybe use a little bit of dots. It doesn't, you don't want it to look like just like you're drawing a grid. You want it to look, and I already did it too heavy there, but you want it to just, there we go. That's more like it. So just like this. Do, 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 tapping it sometimes, maybe leave a little bit of gaps, you know, just something along those lines so that when it's over here, it kind of looks like it might have had a word on it. All right. So, uh, last step I'm just going to do once this dries, so I'm going to put an Agrax earth shade on it. I'm going to paint around the edges and then I will show you, uh, the finished, uh, finished model. That's basically it right there, but I'll give you a, a better shot and a full 360 of it and my closing arguments. All right. Okay. Got the Armageddon dust on there for the uh, texture paint. So I'm basically just now going to finish up um, the way I base things. And that is to add um, some agar exert shade over this. And I think just leave it at that point. Let it dry whatever color it dries and uh, not actually worry about it too much because I'm okay with how that looks now. I put a little bit of tufts of grass, so I'll probably throw some on there, but I won't just show you that part. And uh, I'll come around here with some Abaddon Black and I probably won't show you that part either. But what I will show you really quick, since this is a fulminator, um, I do not freehand my um, icons on the side of the shoulder because I'm not that good at freehanding. So um, if it's like a one or two off type of thing, I will definitely give it my best shot. But this is the 35th ish um space marine fulminator that i have and i did not want to have to do every single one of those uh those icons on the shoulders so what i did was i created my own um transfer sheet it's actually very simple i was very excited that uh people have very detailed uh kind of how to do it and um it's really simple you you get you get the transfer sheet first off uh, I end up making a lot of the size that I wanted and as well as a bunch of other different sizes to go along with that. And let's see if I can reach the sheet from here and I'll just show you. Um, so what it is, is it's, it's just a, a sheet of, of that material. So here you go. And all I did was created, um, I printed these out in just simple white and black or black and white at whatever sizes and this was I no longer have this file unfortunately because but at the time this was this is at you know 25 uh, percent at 20 20 15 percent blah 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 so obviously you can see the the ones that I've used most are these uh these tens I think it was one two three four five something like 50 50 or so of that size uh, I got a couple vehicle ones and I um, I've been adding a couple of these really tiny ones to when whenever there's a large uh, gun or whatnot. So if I ever make more, that'll be what I do. Now this sheet itself, um, you can print on it just like it's normal printer paper. So you just go get yourself, I think it's a laser printer is what's preferred um, in color. And then when you go to spray, because you have to spray over it, you just spray a, a glossy coat over it and you're done. So I've cut out one right here to go on the, uh, the shoulder. I'm not going to show you that because it's kind of boring. So, but you will get to see it in the finished product. So there you go. All right. I think that uh, that concludes with this guy. And I'll be back with my final thoughts. And now we come to the end of another episode of Oversham Drew Paints. So the Assault Inter Intercessor now gets to join his buddies over there on the uh, the top. And eventually I'll have to make another shelf as the Primaris uh, plus a couple kits is, or the, what do you call it, Dark Imperium box plus a couple other kits are taking up a whole shelf. So I need to add another layer so I can put most of the Indominus stuff on there. Uh, got a little bit, uh, little bit extra long-winded in some of the explanations and some of the steps. Um, Hopefully you got something out of it. If not, uh, well, then there's always the, 
the short version, which is only uh, something like five minutes long, which is already out, you could check out too. But if you made it to this point in the video, I'm assuming that uh, you don't mind my long-windedness. Uh, that's all for this one. I'm going to be doing more from the Anominus box set. Uh, probably go back and forth between Necrons, but, you know, really just depends on what I feel like painting at the time. So uh, if you enjoy this, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and, uh, you know, let me know what uh, what's in my eye. Got it. Uh, let me know what you like to see, and uh, yeah, catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.